Hey there, everyone. This is Jennifer Kenna. I'm so glad to be here today, and I'm really, really excited to share with you what are the benefits of joining a team. So I get asked this question all the time, and I just wanted to kind of get you up to speed because it's not typical. Uh, most agents, you know, I was kind of surprised to learn. I came from the healthcare background uh, into real estate, and I was really surprised to learn there was not more resources in place or training or mentorship. Uh, I found that either agents were really successful and they didn't want to share any of their secrets or they struggled and they were selling, you know, four houses a year to their friends and family. So there never seemed like that really special formula that a new agent can just get right up and going, start making money right away and really, really learn the ins and outs of the real estate business. So I had to create my own team. <laughs> so I went out to the marketplace, found some fantastic coaches, changed my business, changed my life and really helped me to grow from struggling to sell 10 homes my first year in business to being able to sell 150 homes a year now um, and run a team. So it's been really, really great, fantastic. And now my job is to pass along that knowledge to you. So I wanna save you lots of frustration, um, lots of lost income, um, or having that fear when you're trying to leave a job and trying to make that full commitment into real estate. So we wanna shortcut everything for you and show you what some of those benefits are of joining a team. So let's get started. All right. So first of all, you know, what are the benefits? Why? What are the benefits of joining a team? So I think this is a really valuable question. And I think it's really important that everybody knows because sometimes they're trying to compare apples to apples like, oh, well, I'll join this real estate company or this one or this one. And there are so many out there that are heavily recruiting and, you know, they all kind of sound great. Um, but just remember that there's that you're really building a business for yourself. So they might offer a little bit of training here and there, uh, which usually is paid for training, um, but they're not giving you that kind of hands on the job training that a team like ours will offer. So first of all, I want to give you just a little bit of perspective. So real estate in the industry in general really has a problem. So you might be a new agent. So maybe this is kind of shocking to you, but I want to be able to share this type of knowledge. Um, just so you know what to expect, or you maybe you're in the industry for years and you're, you're going to hear a lot of this stuff and go, oh my gosh, I wish I knew a lot of this sooner. Um, so it's a little scary. Some of the statistics I'm going to share with you, but I think it's important that you know what you're getting into. So here's some of the problems that we have. So this is a danger report that came out from the NAR and was talking about lots of different dangers that were facing the real estate industry. And it wasn't pretty because as we're looking at it, basically all of those things that they warned us about back in 2015 are all happening right now. <laughs> so I'll share some of those with you. Number one, the masses of marginal agents are absolutely destroying the reputation of realtors. You might even know some agents out there that really don't have a lot of professionalism. They really don't have a lot of experience. And maybe you've had a bad experience yourself with a real estate agent before. So unfortunately, there's so many that have no training or poor training that they're really giving us all a bad name and giving us a bad reputation. So first of all, there's an oversupply of realtors out there. There's over 200 million licensed agents in the US. It's pretty crazy. Uh, one reason for that is the barrier to entry is really low. So you take an online course, maybe cost you a couple hundred bucks, maybe two to three weeks, and you have a real estate license. You're ready to go out there and, and start selling multi-million dollar houses and contracts each and every year. Um, the turnover of agents is astounding. So it's really, really sad statistics, but most people do not succeed in this industry. Uh, they give it a try. They put their toe in the water. Maybe it's a, a side hustle or it's a... Uh, you know, they retired from their main career and now they want to get into real estate or they retired down to Florida and now they're starting this new venture. Um, but it's a really tough business and you have to treat it as a business and you have to really put the time and effort and energy into learning it so that you do a good job by your, your customers. Um, the vast majority of agents are part-time, poorly trained, and they're incompetent in what they're supposed to be doing for their jobs. So I get lots of questions. I do some real estate coaching and I also have a YouTube channel. So people will reach out to me all the time. And it's like, oh my goodness, the questions that I get sometimes, it's pretty terrifying. Um, so it just shows that they really don't have any training and they really don't know what business that they're in and what they should be doing. So there's a 90% plus failure rate of agents. So really scary numbers here. The problem is just our industry doesn't train agents. So how long does it become, how long does it take to become a cosmetologist, for example, 1500 hours, 
of schooling versus the you know two weeks that we get for real estate. Even a massage therapist is 500 hours of school and hands-on training. Truck drivers, 148 hours. So real estate, we're at 60 hours. A lot of it's done online. And even the training that they give you to pass the test, it doesn't give you that hands-on training. It's like leaving college and saying, okay, I'm ready for my first job and having no idea what you're doing the first day on the job. So first of all, the length of time is very, very short. Uh, there's still always that 80-20 rule. So there's going to be, you know, 80% get in the business and, you know, don't really know what they're doing. Um, and so usually that's kind of a, a statistic, but in real estate, the top 50% sold 91% of the homes, the bottom 50 sold 8%. So it is not the typical 80-20, uh, it's actually more 90-10. Uh, the top 10% of agents actually sold 52%. <laughs> it's crazy. So either people are very, very successful and take it seriously and own it as a career and run it as a business, or the vast majority just do it part-time and really don't invest that much into learning and training. Plus over 30% of agents are brand new each and every year. So that's telling you there a lot of people are coming out of school and they've never sold a house before. So a lot of times they're, you know, not, not having a lot of experience, but maybe they're presenting themselves with lots of experience and uh, it's giving us a bad reputation. So we also don't have a lot of respect. So lots of different tests and, and um, surveys that were put out there showed that, you know, most people do not respect us or trust us. So 73% don't even trust our advice. So that's pretty horrible uh, numbers there. They also look at us as salespeople. So the average agent, we say, oh, let's, you know, they're trying to, trying to get one over on you, trying to push a product on you that maybe you don't want or maybe you don't need. Um, so they think that we're really selling, sell, salesmen. Um, so they also don't trust us for that reason. So most agents sell six to eight homes a year. That's usually a full-time agent. And that's maybe their friends and family, maybe their neighbor, uh, maybe their church, something like that. They're marketing to their sphere. Um, commissions are always negotiable. Like, oh, sure, well, I'll take less money. Uh, and, and do less service. Um, we're not really respected. We're not really trusted. Uh, mostly it's a part-time job for most people. They're only interested in the sale. So this is what the perception is for our customers. They think it's all about uh, the commission check for us. We're viewed as a commodity. Like oh, I can use that person or I can use this person. I get the same service. They also think that we're not knowledgeable and they're not positioned as an expert. So think about a comparison like your CPA or a lawyer or your doctor. You know, usually you go to see them because you, you pay for their advice and you do see lots of value in the information that they provide. So why isn't it the same way with real estate agents? You know, it's, it's something that really, really needs to be worked on. So a downside to the traditional real estate models, there's no consistent levels of service. So even let's say Caldwell Bankers got 500 agents that hang a license under their brokerage. Um, everyone has their own marketing message. Everyone has their own level of service. Everyone has their own cell phone number that's answering all the calls and they're doing everything themselves as a mini business owner, holding their, a name under a brand. So there's no consistent level. Nobody knows what to expect. They don't know what's normal, what's not normal, when they should call, when they shouldn't call, what they should say. Uh, there's just no level of service there. There's no clear marketing message. So everyone is the, the number one producer or the top producer or 1% uh, in their marketplace. You know, everyone just kind of has the same story that they just repeat over and over uh, because there's not that clear marketing of what separates one agent from another agent. Um, we don't have any shared marketing or resources. So every agent in an office, you could be working right next to someone in your cubicle and you're competing against each other. So you're making your flyer to go out to the same neighborhood while your neighbor is making a flyer to go out to the neighborhood as well. So we don't have any of that shared marketing or resources. It's more of an office leasing business. So we have desk fees like, okay, well, I'm, I want to sit and work at this desk and uh, use my cell phone. And I pay a monthly fee to have my desk sitting there. It's every agent for themselves. There's no staff support. So this was kind of surprising to me. I thought when I hung a license with my first broker that the receptionist would help me or she would work for me or she'd make copies or she would help guide me or someone would, would help train me. And I was completely in it myself. The uh, staff that was there was actually there just to help the broker run the business. They weren't there for us, the agents. Uh, no leads provided because it's so expensive. It's really expensive to be offering marketing and leads to agents that aren't trained and don't know what they're doing and aren't converting and only want to work part-time. Makes it really hard as a broker or a team leader to provide business to people when they're not really fully invested or trained. And then agents competing directly with each other. So I've had, I went on a cruise and I had a teammate who I thought was a good friend of mine steal a customer while I was gone. I asked her to show one house. Yeah, well, she closed it and didn't even pay me a referral fee. So it's a very, it's just a sad kind of uh, traditional model. And this is why we need to change it so much as well. 
Now, the 2020 NAR report is that the average agent's going to make less than $33,000 a year before their expenses. So that's before their marketing, before their gas, before their car payment. Uh, that's really what most agents are making. So it's really sad. Even after expenses, they're about $23,000. So maybe you see agents on social media and you say like, wow, they look like they do such a great business. Or you just assume because you see their postcard in the mail all the time that they're just crushing it out there. Um, you might quickly find out they might only sell four homes a year. So they're in this exact marketplace doing about $33,000 a year before expenses. So it looks quite glamorous online. Doesn't mean that's what they're doing. So our team business model, this is the shift. So it's not just like, oh, we're supplying leads or we're supplying a, tech, a transaction coordinator. It's not a onesie twosie type item. It's the entire business model is completely different. So we're not in the business of selling homes. We're owning a business that sells homes. So if you guys have read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, it's a really fantastic um, uh, image here that he's put together. He said, number one, you're an employee when you have a job, when you're changing your time for money. If you're self-employed, a lot of times you own a job. So now maybe you're a uh, independent agent working under Caldwell Banker, but basically, you know, if you don't answer the phone or you don't have a closing each month, you're unemployed. Now you're going to change that to become a business owner. Now you own a system. So this is where you can scale, you can grow, you can go on vacation. Uh, you actually own the business so that you can actually leave the business if you want to, and maybe have some other things in place like revenue share and shares of stock so that you can actually retire versus a lot of agents that are selling houses when they're in their 70s. So you really want to focus on owning a system. So having those technology tools in place, um, the support staff, being able to leverage, having showing agents, all those things are different systems that allow you to be an owner, not just owning a job. Big difference. So the traditional agent versus teams. So agents that work on teams make more money and sell more houses. So the numbers are all there for us. So there's some companies, you know, uh, most agents, you'll see, you can kind of divide out these numbers, you know, number of agents, 286, only 183 of them are even um, producing. And on average, they're selling about 14 homes or nine homes per agent. So that's kind of what their averages are. But on select homes, which is a team, um, they actually, they had 30 agents on their team, but they were each selling 27 homes each per year. So the production goes up. So the volume goes up, which is a huge benefit as a real estate agent, because when you're selling more houses, it means you're talking to more people, you're getting more reviews, you're getting more potential referrals and lifelong customers. So the more people that you're working with, the long, longer you're going to be in the business. So it's a huge, huge benefit. So the sad news is that the average agents are broke, that most likely they also have another job that they're working because they can't make it in real estate by itself. So out of most realtors, 59% of them make less than $10,000 a year and 74% make less than $25,000 a year. So it looks like a glamorous job, but most agents are really, really struggling because now they're having to become business owners. Uh, you're a small business owner. So now you're the, uh, you know, your customer service, you have to be the marketing expert. You have to be the salesperson. You have to go on appointments. You have to enter everything into the MLS. Uh, you're hanging up signs and putting lock boxes on. So it's so much busy work that it's really difficult to sell many houses or have many customers or agents don't know where to get customers from. So the profitability uh, for teams is always going to be more. Team agents are going to sell 2.7 times more homes than agents that work on their own. So this shows you what that sales volume looks like for teams versus a standard brokerage. They sell more and they have more productivity as far as uh, closed sides. So the big difference is now when you're working with a team, you're going from being an agent to being a CEO because now you have systems in place, you have employees, you have staff, you have showing assistants, you have all these other things that you're really running it as a business, not a solopreneur. You're going from hustle to scale. You're going from prospecting based to now marketing based because you have a big name and a lot of marketing dollars pushing out there so that you're able to leverage versus you having to come up with your own logo and your own brand and start from scratch and do lots and lots of prospecting and door knocking. You have no leverage to having lots of leverage. You're going from being a doer to being a leader. You're going from being tactical to being strategic. Instead of being overwhelmed, now you have clarity on exactly what you're doing and what you're building. Instead of being reactive, you're being proactive. Instead of chasing deals, you're living your dream. So this is the really big shift between being a solopreneur and working when building a team. So some agents start to think scarcity versus abundance. So they want to keep all the money for themselves. They go to brokerages that don't offer very much, but they let them keep all their money. So um, you know, they end up selling way less homes 
and they're way work way more hours and they're going to get burnout and net less money. So it looks attractive on the outside, but now you're doing the entire business model by yourself. So what kind of service can you give a customer when you're trying to juggle and be everything to everyone? Um, so you have to think of abundance. There's so much business out there. We track those numbers, which is fantastic. We look every single month at how many houses are selling and that lets me know, hey, there's a billion dollars of business that goes through my county. So there's abundance. So I have some examples too. So these are some people that were on my team. Uh, they joined for a short amount of time. She And then she thought, okay, I can do this and do it completely on her own. So I actually was tracking her numbers to see how well she did. So with our team in uh, September 22, we started getting some Zillow leads and she works in Northport area. She sold two homes in September. Now she was working a full-time job, quit her job and got into real estate. So she had no real estate experience whatsoever. She sold two homes in September. She sold another house in October, three houses in November, one house in December, five houses in January, four houses in February, and then thought, you know what? I think I can do this on my own. This is pretty easy. I do a great job. So she decided to leave the team and go on her own. She still had some little business between uh, March and April. So there were two more houses. Then in the next three months, she sold zero houses. So she went from potentially having a $150,000, $200,000 a year income to all of a sudden she had no business and no income and you know going 90 days without any uh, sales is a pretty scary thing so it seems like it's really easy but you have to know that there's lots of systems in the background that are working with you so that you can go out and spend your time on the money making activities you should be going on appointments talking to customers or writing contracts and let all the other parts of the job go to somebody else here's another one so chris he was on my team for about a year uh, when I first met him, he hadn't sold any houses. I think he'd been licensed about a year, but he was struggling. He was having a hard time kind of getting things up and going. So he joined our team. He sold 16 houses in one year. He left in January. He said it was his one year contract. So he goes, you know, I think I'm going to go somewhere where I can keep more of my commissions. So I looked up his numbers and he sold one lot for hundred thousand in five months since he left. So this isn't something to brag about. This is not something that I take lightly. The reason I track him is because I really care and I never wanted them to leave. But I also track them because I want to see, you know, how did it turn out for them? You know, is my team really the best option? Maybe, you know, going out was the best thing for them. So I've tracked these numbers and I have not found that to be true. So we have a couple different options here. So I want to know what does this mean in numbers and splits? So let's say you sold a house for $350,000 at a 3% commission. Um, so you got $10,500 $10, total. We would do a 50-50 split on our team because we provided the lead and the support and all the uh, marketing. The agent will take home $52.50, so $5,250. And if you sold 25 to 30 homes each year, which is what most producing agents do on a team, you'd make $131,000 in your first year without having any expenses, any marketing, any staff, uh, the office space, desk fees, all of that is covered because you're part of a team. So if you want to go independent and you want to keep 100% of your money, and maybe you sold four houses, but you kept 100%, that would be 36,000 in nine months. And that's what most people do. So when you're really looking at how much money are you netting, you're going to make more money by selling more volume and meeting more customers. And so it's a really big difference. Some people just kind of get lost in the weeds and they say, oh, they see short-sighted or they think scarcity minded versus abundance. There's plenty of money to be made out there. There's plenty of opportunity for everybody. So the opportunity cost, so rather than having, you know, 30 new annual new clients that could refer them business, be return clients and give online reviews, you've only met with four or sold four. So doing it all yourself means less time and less ability to give five-star service to your clients. So you want to be able to leverage the services of a team. So incurring your own cost. So when you're a solo agent on your own, you're doing your own marketing lead gen. I mean, this is a couple thousand dollars per month. You have to have your own software and technology to maintain all the leads that are coming in. You're now having to do the whole process from contract to close. Then you have to nurture people that aren't ready right now, or maybe you have to nurture them that are going to, that close that you want to continue to do business with you years from now. You have to now be everything to everyone. So to make that $36,000 net working on her own, but she kept hundred percent. Uh, now let's say she maybe did some marketing, some lead gen. So that would be 6,000 a month. And she had to hire an assistant to help her. So that's $15,000 maybe a year. So now she's down to $15,000 take home money at the end of the year. That is not even worth it for the hours and time that you put in. So working as a team, as a collaborative team, you're going to net way, way more money. 
So I do want to mention this too, because I think some people aren't prepared for it. If you've never been in a sales job or a commission only job, there is a roller coaster. So you get a big check, you're super excited, and then you go through a slump and you go, oh, no, I'm broke. And then you start to get anxiety and worry and fear. So when you work on a team, you have a pipeline of business. You know that you have people to rely on that are going to help you not go through this highs and lows roller coaster. So one thing that we train on with our team is we don't want you to look at things as being an order taker. We want you to be a consultant, an advisor, a professional. So that's really the training and, and systems that we put in place for our team members. So an order taker, have you guys ever walked into the mall and you're walking around and the guy goes, hey, can I help you with anything? And you, of course, say no, because you don't want to be bothered. Um, versus somebody comes in and says, hey, what are you looking for? You look like a size six. Would you like me to bring over the pair of shoes that matches that dress? You know, somebody that's actually consulting and giving you advice and helping you. You know, what, what event are you shopping for? They start asking you some questions. Um, so an order taker, really you're a salesman. You have a selling mindset, you're a product pusher, you speak more than you listen, 80% versus 20% listening. You're answering all their questions. It's very transactional. Now you go, okay, they close next onto the next one versus being a consultant. So a consultant has a helping mindset, more of a service mindset than a sales mindset. You're a problem solver. You're listening 80% of the time, talking 20%. You're asking the right questions and you're doing relationship selling. You care about your customer. You want to learn more about them and how can you help them and what are their needs? So it's a completely different way of doing things. It's a very unique approach and it's going to separate you from everyone else uh, that's out there. Also leverage of a team. So because we work with a team, we have lots of agents. We can also brag that we sell 150 homes a year. We can also brag we have you know, 200 different reviews online or we have 15 active listings because we're all working together as a team. Leverage those things as you're talking to customers, because all of those things are going to separate you over a solo agent trying to do it all themselves. So if they're looking, maybe they interviewed you for the listing position and they interviewed their neighbor, they look online, they go, wow, I mean, you've sold 600 homes on Zillow. This person has only sold 10. Obviously, you're going to look a lot stronger. So you want to leverage all that stuff. Instead of going it alone. So then you just have no leverage. So here, he was a member of my team. He went on his own. He sold maybe six, seven houses with me in three months. He did. A, he made some money. He was super excited. But now if we're trying to compete for business, now this is what his looks like. So it looks like he's you know, had one listing, one sale um, in the last 12 months. It just looks really, you know, really uh, sad compared to somebody who's working as a team. So the benefits of a team model. Agents do much more business. You're going to get a more experienced agent. So it's a better service for the uh, customer as well, because that's really what we're here for, right? The consumer is going to get better advice, representation, greater efficiencies, greater purchasing power, because now we're selling a house every other day. So if we're selling lots of houses, obviously we have more resources. We have better partnerships. Uh, it really starts to become a really great service for our customer because we know, we know what we're doing versus an agent that you might compete with that sells four homes a year. They don't do it enough to really have it down to a science. You're going to have more service and support because we have a staff that's hired to help you, the agent, greater marketing budgets. Sellers are going to have access to ready buyers and buyers are going to have access to more inventory. So it's a huge value to our customers and you can earn money, time, and freedom, which for me was always the most important thing and what I was always looking for. Another thing I want to talk about is specializing roles. So I think most people don't understand the value of this. It's like playing sports. So if you have a kind of sports background, I think most people do understand this a little bit better. You work as a team. So each person has a specialized expert role they do day in and day out. So if you're, if you're putting on a listing and you haven't done it in six months, how efficient are you going to be at that <laughs> versus somebody that's all they do. So they become very, very specialized at doing the listings, like our listings coordinator. So real estate as an industry is set up for the realtor to be all things to all people, which is setting them up for failure. So that's probably why we see that 90% failure rate, because how can they possibly be good at every single part of the job? So juggling just doesn't work. So I think back in the day, everyone's like, oh, I can multitask. Now we've learned, especially with cell phones and interruptions and texting and social media, all this stuff is making us less effective, not more effective. So multitasking also leads to more mistakes. So studies show you make more errors when you're switching from task to task, jumping from here to there versus just focusing and doing one task at a time. So it takes four times longer to recognize even new things because you're multitasking. So all of this just shows that it's not good to be switching and jumping around from here to there. You really want to have specialized uh, roles and get really, really good at the things that you're supposed to be working on and also the things that make you money. 
So specialize in a role. So you're going to gain your skill and efficiency because it's all you do. So if you're a buyer's agent and your job is showing houses and you meet three to four buyers a week, you're going to be really awesome at showing houses, right? Every role in the team is going to require unique personality traits, unique experience, unique training and skills, because this is what you do. So the TC versus the receptionist versus the listing coordinator, they all have different skills and different training. So admin staff versus agents. So what you're doing is now leveraging your time and everyone leveraging each other's abilities. So instead of one plus one equal two, it actually equals three because now you've leveraged and compounded to get really specialized at what you're doing. So tasks are grouped together and assigned to people that can do it efficiently. So versus the realtor doing it all, which is how our industry is set up, you want to have somebody who's responsible for each part of the job. So we have professional photographers. I don't want my realtor trying to take photos of houses or trying to get good at photos of houses. That's what we hire them for. We have a contracts manager. She's really, really good at the contract and, and gets up to date on all the compliance and all the changes and all the legal side of things, works right with the title company. Let her handle all the contracts for you. We have marketing specialists. So you shouldn't have to become the you know, postcard uh, king and have to learn how to run Facebook ads. I mean, that's all kind of crazy that realtors try to do everything. We have listings manager. We have a client care manager that follows up behind a customer and says, hey, how was your experience with our realtor? Anything we can do differently? We send out surveys. We send out reviews because all those things are really valuable for the client. We have listing specialist and buyer specialist. It's really hard for agents to do both. So we have tried it both ways. And I find when you're trying to, you're wearing a hat, trying to get the best price for a buyer. And then you go to the listing, you automatically start looking at the price from a buyer perspective. It's really tough to do. So we like to really specialize and then you get good at it. If that's all you do is listings. You're going to get really, really strong at it and be able to compete with some of the top listing agents out there. So hopefully you guys see lots of value in this. And the last thing I just want to add is, you know, why wouldn't all companies do this? Why don't all companies do a team business model? Well, first of all, since it's a commission only business model, it's a lot more riskier. So there's huge capital risk. So we can actually invest in employees and staff and uh, marketing and lead gen and all these services and our agents don't close or they don't sell. So it's a, it's a problem. There's much more overhead. So I think even with a small team like ours, our overhead is $40,000 a month. So there's a certain volume of homes that we have to make sure we sell to make sure we're profitable and that we're covering our overhead. There's much greater management involved. So rather than just letting the agent figure it out and do it all, now we have different specialized roles taking care of different parts. And there's a lot of management involved. It's much more complicated because now we're involved in everyone's deals. We want to know what's going on. We want to know how we can help, how we can fix things, and how we can all work together as that team. It also can be a huge tracking management headache. Believe me, it's really hard to try to keep track of all the lead sources coming in. If we have a hundred different clients coming in, we really have to be able to track and sort those. We have to be able to track which agents are converting at a higher level because even agents, some are stronger than others. So it can definitely be a big tracking headache. So this is why most brokers decide not to do it. They'd prefer to charge you monthly, regardless if you sell a house or not, offer you very, very little value, but then they don't ask for very much money. So they're trying to hire hundreds of agents or thousands of agents to make them profitable versus we're looking for a few good agents that we are going to invest in. We're going to partner with, and we only make money when you make money. So we're taking a huge risk there as well. So some of the hard facts, I kind of mentioned this already, but cost of running my small team is $40,000 a month. We average 10 to 15 closings per month, and that's pretty much breaking even, making a little profit, including my own production. I still work as an agent. Um, each meeting that we have costs the company an average of $450 an hour. So if I have all of my management team there, everyone obviously wants to get paid hourly. <laughs> so just having those meetings costs us a lot of money. I do Grant Cardone sales training for our team. It's $2,000 a month. I have Blake Corey's mastery training costs us $1,500 a month because I'm investing back in my people. I want to make sure that their skills are really good and that they train all the time and that they know what their value is and they know how to compete with other agents. We want to get better leads working with a team versus a solo agent because it's all based on conversions. So we are a Zillow premier partner. We also partner with Upnest, Homelight. Uh, we probably have about 15 different referral sources and they want to work with teams. They don't want to work with just one agent. So we're actually getting really better conversions, about 25% conversion rates because our leads are better because we work as a team. Now, the more sales we do as a team, the more money we all have, because that money goes right back into marketing, lead flow. We have parties, we go on trips, we do all kinds of incentives because we're in this together. Now, it all starts with mindset. So this is what I need from you. 
So I'd like to tell you the value that we offer and what, what our team does and why we're different so that you can have some options out there to think about. Um, but it all starts with your mindset. So we find the people that are really great fits for our team. They think we, not I, it's a culture. We want everyone to come on board and say, how can I help you? Or, you know, how can I, how can I learn from you? You know, we work together and that's really the idea. We are on a mission. We want to have the highest net earning agents in the market. I want all of my agents to become millionaire agents. How cool would that be? So that would just help us all as a team and let the uh, tides rise all ships. We have an empowerment model. We want our, our team to be strong. We want them to be skilled. We want them to be professionals. So we really want to empower our agents to help grow their own business and then bring somebody else with you, help somebody else behind you. So it's very empowering. We also have fun. So real estate is a tough business. There's some letdowns sometimes. Things can get kind of crazy. We're dealing in multi-million dollar contracts all the time. So it's really important that we step back and we also have fun. So we have lots of different private events in that way. We attract agents. We don't chase them. So you might get lots of calls from people trying to recruit you. Uh, things in the mail. I mean, this is just their business because they're on the numbers game. They're in a numbers business. So we don't want that. We want to attract the best agents that are part of our culture that we want part of our team versus chasing them. We also have a commitment to our agents and their families. So I feel that stress. I feel that pressure to make sure that when my new agent starts that they're making money in the first 30 days because it's important for them. It's important for their family. So I actually feel that pressure as their mentor to make sure they're successful. Uh, versus just a broker who doesn't even know your name and just says, ah, just sit in the corner and hopefully you make a sale. Call your sphere, do some open houses or door knocking. Our agents have a commitment to the team. We want them to give back 100% to the team. So I'm willing to give my knowledge and my resources and my staff and my office space to you. I want you to also give and share with the other people on the team. Everyone on our team is a recruiter. So we want a stronger team, a better team, because we want it by referral based. So if somebody goes, hey, I worked with this agent, we closed a house together and they did a killer job and they would be great for our team. That is the strongest agent that's going to come on versus me trying to hire a stranger. So it's really important that everyone on the team makes us want to be a stronger team together. We all see, succeed together. Here's kind of what our org chart looks like. So starting out on the team leader, we also want lead by agents, lead ISA and operations manager. That's our first tier of management. So there's management opportunities. We're run like a business. We're not run where everyone just is a, a licensed realtor or independent contractor. Six to 10 buyer's agents. Then we want to have a lead buyer agent that's going to mentor and coach and train them and they get an override on all their sales. Our ISA, the same thing. We have our lead ISA and then she has two ISAs that work for her now. They're setting up appointments, setting up those leads, calling back and nurturing clients for our agents and setting those up and they get an override and incentive when they do so. We have our transaction coordinator, a listing coordinator, a marketing coordinator, and then some showing partners because we want to really alleviate from our agents having to show houses and getting that burnout sometimes. It's really hard to be in Sarasota one day and Bradenton the other. So we have some showing assistance to help. Now, here's our vision. This is where we're going to get. This is what we're working towards. It's called a stage seven team. So what I really want to build here is going to be team leader again, myself, bring it on an exec executive assistant to help with management of the company director of sales and an operations manager. So then each person has their own departments that they're running and each one of those each has a manager that they're answering to. So this is gonna be our big, big goal. Um, just to share that with you, that's something we're working towards and that's our growth plan for the company is that we want it to run like a business, not as an independent contractor. So thank you guys so much for your time. I know that was quite a lot of information, but I just want to share as much as I can, because this is what I do. This is my purpose uh, is to help agents get started, learn about the market, learn about the industry and learn how to make money quickly. So thank you guys so much. Please reach out to me with any questions or anything I can help you with. Take care.